Welcome everyone. Thanks a lot for staying with us. You're watching Plain Speak with me, Shivani Gupta. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today attended the first in-person summit of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization in two years in Uzbekistan to deliberate on major regional security challenges and issues like trade, investment and energy supplies. All eyes were on this summit as it is coming amid global turbulence in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine and China's saber-rattling with India and then with Taiwan. But from India's point of view, Prime Minister Narendra Modi also came face to face with Xi Jinping, the Chinese president, for the first time since the start of the military standoff in Ladakh in 2020. PM Modi also met Russian President Vladimir Putin for the first time since the Ukraine invasion and at a time when India has been pressed hard by the West for not shunning the long-time ally because of that war. We'll get you more of just who all the Indian Prime Minister has met and what the conclusion of those meetings or the messaging of those meetings has been. But let me first also take you through the Prime Minister's larger message at the SEO Summit on its role and its importance. Now, he talked about how the focus should be on bringing diversified and resilient supply chains. And that's really the biggest global crisis right now. How better connectivity and access to transit is required. He said that India supports mutual trust, cooperation among the SEO countries. And you know, any grouping that India is part of, India is looked at to play that role, especially in a grouping like this, which some worry could become anti-West, but for the presence of India. He also said the SEO can play a constructive role in the post-COVID era and that SEO can further economic recovery and strengthen supply chains. The Prime Minister also used this opportunity to sell Brand India to our partners and our neighbours. I want to highlight some of his statements here. He always uses these summits as an opportunity to do so, but he began by saying that he wants to transform India into a manufacturing hub, big statement of intent. He said India's economy is expected to grow at 7.5% this year, that India is the fastest growing economies in the world. He also said we are focusing on a people-centric development model and that more than 70,000 startups and over 100 unicorns exist in India today. And these are the bilaterals that India has held on the sidelines of the SEO. The Prime Minister met Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the Russian President Vladimir Putin, and we'll get you more of the messaging from that big bilateral as well, the Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi, and of course, as host of this year's summit, Uzbekistan President Shavkat Mirziyoyev. The big debate that's coming up today with Prime Minister sending out the message that he has the SEO summit coming at a time that it is, both with respect to Russia and China and the global scenario, can India achieve its goal in the region via this SEO? एक मैन्युफैक्चरिंग हब बनाने पर प्रगति कर रहे हैं इस वर्ष भारत की अर्थव्यवस्था में 77.5 प्रतिशत वृद्धि की आशा है जो विश्व की बड़ी इकोनॉमीज में सबसे अधिक होगी Let me open this up to our guest joining us. Ambassador Suresh Goyal is with us, former diplomat, former DG of ICCR. Andrew K.P. Leung is international and independent China strategist joining us from Hong Kong. Ingrid Kim is a Russian journalist who will be with us in just a bit. And Purnima Anand is president of BRICS International Forum and International Federation of Indo-Russian Youth Clubs who is on the show with us. Purnima Ji, let me start with you. I'm reading what uh, the news agency PTI has flashed as far as the Indian Prime Minister and the Russian President's you know, bilateral is concerned. And the message that India has given is that this is not an era of war. How significant do you think that statement is, even though India has been criticized for not criticizing Russia over the U invasion of Ukraine?
Purnima ji, you can, can you hear me? That question was for you. Yes, okay, this is good, up, good evening. Yes. Uh, it is really important that uh, Shanghai Corporation organizations are together at Uzbekistan. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is very important that uh, uh, in current realities, Russia, India and China is meeting because it is an important alliance of BRICS also. And uh, in recently in June, we completed 14th summit of BRICS. And this Shanghai Corporation Organization meeting is very important because it will open the new channels for neighboring countries to do the good alliances. Mm -hmm. uh, today, energy and food security is important uh, challenge for neighboring countries. Like Sri Lanka, we know that mm -hmm. Sri Lanka is facing very serious problem. And this problem is upcoming in neighboring countries. And Shanghai Corporation organization can open the ground to discuss the resolution of this uh, uh, problems. Mm -hmm. uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, has uh, highlighted that uh, they are developing a manufacturing hub in India and it is a people-centric development plans. Mm -hmm. And Unicron companies are uh, giving importance because it is a digital civilization and we need to connect uh, digitally with the world. So this is very important that we will get opportunity to resolve our disputes at borders with Pakistan and China and now we can open new gateway for the cooperation in economic and human cooperation. Human but ma'am, do you believe that via so the SEO summit time. can we resolve those issues with China and Pakistan or those are more bilateral issues which frankly wouldn't dominate the focus at the SEO because you know we've not really done a pull aside with Pakistan or China as we know till now. See Ukraine crisis is a very important uh, challenge and we can understand we need to resolve our border problems very soon otherwise if we are bleeding at borders then third countries participation and interventions can develop more difficulties. So we need to resolve our problems, our border issues, as well as our socio-economic development issues. So Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit is very important and it opens the uh, platform for all heads of countries to uh, dialogue and to resolve the hmm. uh, problems. And especially uh, Yuan, Google, uh, currency exchange and trade uh, opportunities and rupee ruble trade opportunities are the uh, are new example that we can open new gateways in trade and aviation and hmm. securities. Uh, Purnima ji, before I move on to some of our other guests, I also wanted to ask you what I began by asking you. India has told Russia in that you know meeting between Prime Minister Modi and President uh, Putin that this is not an era of war. Uh, now, India has, of course, been criticized for not criticizing Russia in the past at the global forums, but India has always maintained that they are for quick resolution of this conflict. How important do you see today's message from India to Russia? This is question with me. Yes, Purnima ji, that's for you. India-Russia cooperation is always important and we know uh, from last 75 years, Russia is always standing uh, with India in all uh, circumstances. Uh, always Russia did veto uh, power uh, use for the favor of India. Now during Ukraine crisis, we saw that uh, Russia is upcoming with new model. Uh, they are looking towards East. And Eastern cooperation is more important because in Western countries there is a saturation hmm. and uh, there is a uh, limitation because they are also passing through inflammation and uh, after pandemic all countries are facing problems. Mm -hmm. So this is new opportunities with the cooperation of Eastern world, Eastern countries, BRICS countries and SCO countries. Okay. So India, Russia is having new uh, ground to collaborate. Yes, after and there couldn't years, be a more tumultuous time Indian for that. Um, of course, relations. there's a next stage of the India-Russian um, cooperation and relationship is developing 
but it has been hard on India. In fact, Ingrid is joining us from Russia. Ingrid, I want to understand from you, how do you take the message from India that the Indian Prime Minister has given to the Russian President that this is not an era of war? Not sure if Ingrid can hear me. Ambassador Suresh, would you like to take that question, please? Uh, it's a very interesting question, I must say. Hmm. How would Russia take the message from India? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it would be basically kind of uh, some kind of picky volatility, uh, not very happy, but at the same time, Russia is not doing very well in the war. So perhaps, uh, not perhaps, it really does need to end the war. Mm -hmm. But how does it end the war till Ukraine actually concedes to it? Mm -hmm. So therefore, they are in a bit of a fix. Therefore, the message from India would be taken with a bit of ambivalence, if I can say, the, say so. Mm -hmm. But I think Russia needs to be given the message. And therefore, Prime Minister Modi has done well by saying, that this is not the era for war. Hmm. But if I need to go beyond this, hmm. the fact is that any war in the present day world, whether it hmm. is Armenia, Azerbaijan, or it is Russia, Ukraine, particularly if there is a nuclear power involved, has a danger, has the danger of spiraling into a nuclear war hmm. if it does not end soon. And I don't think the world is prepared to face any kind of war, particularly a nuclear war. So that is one thing. Uh, do I have uh, another one minute? I want to go into what Prime Minister actually said. Sure. At the uh, yeah, uh, I think for the it's very very heartening to note that Prime Minister has given an address which is really visionary. Hmm. When it because for us the importance of SCO lies not in bilateral talks with either Putin or Xi Jinping yeah. or anyone else. Hmm. Frankly speaking, the I'm quite happy, quite delighted that we did not go into the bilateral talks with the Xi Jinping. Shahbaz Sharif could not afford to really initiate a talk. Mm. And therefore, it is all that I, I, it should be. Mm. But the address itself was visionary. When we talked about the economic issues, mm. when we talked about the need for trust and confidence between the nations, particularly those nations in the area in Central Asia and China, mm. when we talk about food security, our Prime Minister gave a vision where all the countries in the region and the world can actually work with each other to ensure common good for people. Mm -hmm. Now, that is something which I think should carry for to a great distance, really. And I'm quite happy that it happened. We need to work on that kind of a message. Okay. Yes. Ambassador Suresh, I'll come back to you. And of course, I want to go across to Andrew also on the message that not having a bilateral or the side with the one-on-one -on -one with the Chinese president gives in itself. But I think Ingrid is back with us. Ingrid, can you hear me this time? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, thank you for joining us. I wanted to understand from you how Russia would take the message from India that this is not an era for war. And that is something that India has been pressing for for quite some time. India believes it stands for peace and has been batting for early resolution of the conflict in Ukraine. But that conflict has been on for six months now, something that not many of us imagined it would go on for that long. How do you think that message is being taken in Russia that, you know, we need to bring this to an end? Yeah, first of all, I want to remind that Russia and India, long time friends in very uh, collateral relationship we have uh, during the, from Soviet times. Mm. So I think India, because uh, insists to keep a peace in the world, it's a good position. And we are together one organization, international, like called BRICS. Uh, so I think we have a similar ideology. Russia also uh, wants to resolve this uh, by negotiating from beginning. And if you come back from 2014, you will see how it was like uh, when it was referendum in Bahia and how it started to be a civil conflict between uh, East and West Ukraine. And we must uh, play back because we must uh, see con consequences which has come up like right now, as you said, six months ago. It's still lasting, and a lot of deaths, uh, which is usually happens uh, in Ukraine, and uh, we have also loss in our Russian army. So I think it must be taken for, from Russia as a way of. We also want our government to resolve it, and uh, there is no any intention to to you know occupy or how we call it in uh, our media, which is uh, called propaganda. Uh, the different senses which is Russia have intentions. Intervene Ukraine is absolutely uh, the Russia idea is about security of the, their own country. And our president thinking about our 
lives about our safety and security. Okay. If you remember a speech of Mr. Zelensky in München of the Forum of Security, and mm. he started to say that he wants to in his uh, country expand NATO, and this is, was like a frightened for Russian and signed for Russian government. I think if we compare with India and uh, Pakistan relation, if somebody from Pakistan start to pet in India with some of these type of notices, I think it also will be taking some action from Indian uh, governments. Uh, this is uh, just to give an example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Andrew, do you think this is as much a message for China too, the one that India gave to Russia? Well, I think India is a very good example um, or a very good indicator uh, of the big elephant in the room uh, in the um, uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization meeting this year, unlike any other meeting that went before. What is happening now, um, as illustrated by India, which is uh, in both camps, as it were, is in the court led by the United States against China. Uh, it is also um, uh, taking a different approach uh, to Russia over Ukraine, uh, very distinct from that um, of the United States. So I think that it illustrates um, um, a kind of bifurcation um, uh, led by the United States in trying to decouple from China, trying to um, squeeze uh, Russia, disrupting uh, global supply chains, uh, as uh, highlighted earlier. And, and of course, that the um, um, another illustration that even India uh, has to adopt certain measures to safeguard its own food security by um, banning the export of rice, for example. Mm -hmm. So that illustrates that um, a kind of world uh, where it's not just a one-sided um, kind of rhetoric or, or uh, directive uh, dictated by a Western-led uh, coalition mm -hmm. um, under the United States. So we can see that more and more countries in the developing world are trying to find another forum um, to explore common interests, uh, to have their own um, uh, um, a particular kind of narrative, to take into account their own uh, cultural, historical, geographical, and, and geopolitical interests. You mentioned um, the elephant in the room, Andrew, so I'll just cut, to, cut the chase to the, obviously, the elephant in the room, which is, you know, uh, the standoff in Ladakh between India and China. Now, there's some progress is continuing to be made, but it is still very much a sticking point. And okay. to be honest, yeah. the Indian perspective is very clear that, you know, India feels backstabbed by China, despite the bonhomie that the two premiers were enjoying. And then to, you know, to do something like this at the Indian border, I don't think India is going to forget in a hurry what China did, that too, during the pandemic. Uh, but anyways, staying away from that, don't you think that uh, not doing the bilateral or the one-on-one -on -one with the Chinese president, uh, obviously both sides must have weighed in on it, in itself a message that all is not well? I, I don't think that uh, you can dictate um, a bilateral in all circumstances. Uh, it must depend on the um, situations being right. Uh, of course, there's a, a, a increasing kind of understanding between the two countries, but I don't think that you can just say, well, let's have a bilateral regardless. Um, so I think that that's uh, what I'm trying to say, the elephant in the room, uh, is that this uh, SCO is a much, much bigger forum than just concentrating on bilaterals. It's a sure. reflection of what the world is now changing quite rapidly. And there is no uh, very, very different from a um, unilateral uh, world, which has existed since the Second World War. Mm -hmm. Purnimaji, do you believe that India, as Ambassador Suresh was saying, did the right thing by not even getting into a bilateral with Pakistan and China at this summit? Well, what I'm trying to say is that if the situations are right, no, well, Andrew, I was asking that question to Purnima Anand. Purnima Anand, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear because this is very important that uh, India bilateral relations with neighboring countries need to be refreshed. And this is very important time because as I said that with Pakistan, we need to uh, improvise because now Kashmir issue after 370 uh, is stabilized and peaceful uh, opportunities are there in Kashmir. So it is very good bilateral success of India and Prime Minister Narendra Modi that we are doing very well at the border uh, sites and now we can initiate 
socio economic relation with pakistan to improvise our relation with neighboring countries Similarly, but i think China, message that india has sent is that india is in no hurry to push that india is very very secure as far as this relationship is concerned as far as yes. pakistan is concerned but there may be a little bit true. of difficulty when as far hurry. as china is concerned but ambassador suresh uh, you said that it's a good thing that india didn't even get into it why do you say so okay uh i'm a bit of a china expert myself i speak chinese i learned chinese in singapore i served mm. in our embassy in beijing for four years three years uh china is, we need to understand the uh, the chinese psyche uh before this mm. china has a very strong sense of hierarchy particularly when it is a question of power between the nations it's an idea which came from sunzu they live by it and there was a time when for china india was actually competing with them india was coming close to them that was in 90s when india began to really improve economically uh, somehow over the last one decade china has developed a feeling that india is a secondary power and china can basically get away with doing what they want to do mm -hmm. therefore i do believe that it is time that we send a message to china that we may not be economically as rich as you are or in terms of overall gdp but civilizationally we have our own sensitivities we know what we want to do and you cannot write rough shoulder over it therefore if the meeting can have a definite outcome which is satisfactory to both india and china fine hmm. we can have a meeting but if it is going to be a meeting just for the sake of xi jinping having a bit of a satisfaction that he was able to persuade modi hmm. to meet with him hmm. no use no point really having a meeting of this kind which only leads in giving satisfaction to one and not to the other and similarly yes. uh, do you think the equation of course is completely and vastly different as far as india pakistan are concerned because uh, many of yes. us were debating why should india even bother doing a bilateral which i bashir no, I, th i think in the case of pakistan uh, is a bit of a dilemma really hmm. uh, there are contacts between india and pakistan at different levels except at the political level hmm. but the point really here is just just like in the case of when prime minister modi offered condolences at the loss of life mm -hmm. during the recent floods and immediately got blown into pakistan doesn't want any support from india now in this case also if india had offered to have talks with pakistan pakistani interpretation would be that look india has hardly come down to having a talk at the level of prime minister yeah if it, if pakistan were to offer it pakistan would be seen as a weaker country by its own establishment particularly in the election year when the elections are going to be held next year therefore i think in the case of shahbaz sharif he was not prepared he politically too risky for him to initiate any kind of hmm. dialogue and for us it's a question of really how would it be taken by pakistan just like in the case of flood and therefore we have a policy that yes if you want to have a dialogue we will consider it yes if you want to have a meeting sorry not dialogue if you want to have a meeting let us look at it but we would not take the risk or we would not even take the chance Mm. of offering a meeting first yeah andrew yes. i want to come to the larger message and the role of the seo now uh we've seen india and uh, china's interests be a little divergent because of that ladakh standoff in the last couple of years do you believe together all of these countries at the seo level can achieve the larger global good and region good Well, there is no such thing as uh, permanent friends or permanent enemies. Mm. Uh, and then, in an interconnected world, uh, countries are, uh, on the one hand, joined much uh, to get uh, much closer together, but on the other hand, each country has got to guard against its own security uh, and also economic interests. And that's the reality. So, I think that there is a big, big difference, um, still big divide uh, between India and China. Uh, apart from the border, and there is also rivalry. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, in spite of all these differences, countries can still work together uh, on their common interests, uh, including um, the Vietnam. Putin or CM Modi's decision to come to the side of the war is possible that the war is going to be done. But now, we are aware that the Uzbekistan's पीएम मोदी की मुलाकात चल रही है हम जानते हैं कि उज्बेकिस्तान एस सी का हॉस्ट कंट्री है मेजबान देश है और एक बेहतरीन सम्मेलन आयोजित किया है उज्बेकिस्तान ने और उसके बाद अब 
भारत को इसकी चेयरमैनशिप मिली है तो निश्चित तौर पर ये मुलाकात भी काफी अहम है So more visuals coming in of the bilaterals that the Indian Prime Minister has had. Yes, Andrew, please finish your point. I want to go to Ambassador Suresh next. Yes. Well, I, I, I think I've said my say. I okay. mean, this is the yeah. I, I think it's uh, more important for the uh, meeting, the SCO, to concentrate on uh, regional issues, global issues, rather than just looking at bilaterals. Okay. Uh, Ambassador Suresh, what is the larger goal yes. that India would like to achieve as far as the SCO is concerned? And do you believe that India is poised to do so, especially with the chair moving to India as well? I will not be able to so say whether India is poised to uh, to be able to achieve the objective that we should have in uh, SEO. Hmm. But I think what the objective should be hmm. in SEO, if you look at strategic uh, groupings, uh, SEO is the only grouping of Central Asian republics on our in our border areas hmm. in our neighboring region. and the central asian republics are very very important to india both from the security and the strategy point of view connectivity point of view and economic collaboration if afghanistan is important to us it is important to us and therefore the central asian role in that area is important to us please remember that the connectivity project north south uh, highway uh, requires cooperation of central asian republics mm -hmm. and therefore i think sco should become a forum for us to develop our collaboration with not just one central asian republic but with the entire region whether we should be able, and for to do that we need to really establish broader areas of cooperation and working together on different kind of project whether we shall be able to do this in one meeting i think difficult but we need to pursue it further both as a kind of a regional cooperation model and bilateral model okay Yes. All right. I do thank all of our guests for joining us. But you know, before I move away from the SEO uh, totally, take a look at how Pakistan Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif struggled to put on his earphones during his meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin, which even evoked a laugh from the latter. Уважаемый господин премьер-министр. Уважаемый господин премьер-министр, идет перевод, все нормально?